seriously windy crossroad in the middle of nowhere, just south of Dublin. Welcome to the GCN Show. Welcome to the GCN Show, brought to you by our mates over at Wiggle. This week we're asking whether the thirst for extreme is going too far. We have got the best comeback since Michael Jordan, kangaroo danger, and a shocking revelation about brown cycling shorts. They're sh This week in the world of cycling, we learned that super magnesium might be the new carbon. Allied debuted this new frame over the Interbike trade show, and they claim that it's a third lighter than aluminium, and also the most eco-friendly metal in the world. Partly, Dan, because apparently magnesium dissolves naturally and without trace, which is not the perfect trait for your expensive new bike frame, but hopefully it happens over a long period of time and not just after a wet ride. Yeah, fingers crossed. Uh, we also learned this week that despite the fact that we've been taking the piss out of age to our team kit for, well, quite a number of years, haven't we? It appears that brown shorts may now be acceptable, or so say super hip clothing company, Team Dream. Look, brown. Don't believe us? Here they are again, brown. So brown shorts are absolutely fine, as long as they are brown when you buy them. Right. Okay, uh, changing gear very much now onto something far more serious, and that is that also in the news this week was the inquest into the tragic death last year of ultra endurance cyclist Mike Hall, who was hit by a car whilst in the closing stages of the Indian Pacific wheel race. Yep, he and 190 other competitors were in the midst of riding the five and a half thousand kilometres across Australia. For the vast majority of them, it was a sense of personal achievement. But up at the front, it became a fierce competition between two of ultra cycling's best competitors, Christoph Allegart and Hall himself. Yeah, I think it's important to state, isn't it, again, that as we film this, the inquest is ongoing. But in early news reports from there, one phrase has really stuck out and jarred for many of us, which is that the event was actually compared to a Hunger Games on wheels, which is frankly a pretty crass comparison, as well as showing a serious lack of understanding as to what ultra-endurance cycling is all about. Mm. For those of you not up with your pop culture, Hunger Games is a fictional reality competition in which people are asked and forced, in fact, to compete until the death, until there's just one person left. Yeah, whereas, as if you need explaining, ultra cycling is about personal achievement. It's about doing something extraordinary, but entirely voluntarily. I don't think there are many people in that community that are seeking fame or fortune through no. it, are they? No, it doesn't seem like the way. From the outside looking in, ultra endurance cycling could seem inhumane, particularly if you're somebody that couldn't even comprehend why on earth you'd want to do something like that in the first place. But is it and could it ever be inhumane? I mean, there are more and more events popping up and they do tend to try and compete for the mantle of the hardest, the longest, the toughest, or in some cases, the most remote. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? There aren't all that many sports that can do this, are they like become extreme? You, you don't get extreme football or extreme basketball or extreme athletics. The 100 meters is the 100 meters, whereas in cycling, there is this ability to constantly push the boundaries. And you'd think that the further those boundaries get pushed, the more dangerous it could potentially become. Mm. Yeah, there's no doubt that ultra, ultra endurance cycling, should I say, is an extreme sport, but it's not necessarily a good example of increased danger, is it? No. Yes, there have been a number of fatalities over the last few years, but then again, one of those fatalities occurred just hours after the event had started. Yeah, I mean, there's no suggestion, is there, that the fatalities are in any way linked to the difficulty of the event. But the question of whether cycling events are too extreme is asked of loads of other disciplines in cycling, isn't it? Like, I mean, BMX and mountain bike freestyle, those guys are having to go bigger and higher than ever before. Like a backflip is not impressive. You now need to do three on the trot. A front flip isn't impressive either. It needs to be done over a 60 foot gap jump. I believe we're up to quad tail whips now. The wow. first one was done in competition just the other day. Even trials riding can get extreme. Brumotti is a very good example oh, my of word. that. You kind of can't help but watch his videos, but you do so with your heart in your mouth, don't you? As he's teetering over the edge of an abyss. But his videos do go viral, so he is kind of achieving fame from it. Rebel Rampage or Rebel Hardline, I mean, do those riders feel a pressure 
to take increased risks? And if so, where does that pressure come from? Mm. Well, perhaps that question should be posed to someone who's qualified to give the answer. Uh, I shall leave that in your safe hands whilst I go and make a cup of tea. Right, whilst Lloydie has gone to make us a cup of tea, his shoes are being more than ably filled by Blake Sampson from GMBN. Now, Blake, you're kind of described as a free rider, which yes. to most GCN viewers probably doesn't mean very much. So, oh, what is it like? Massive jumps, big drops on an yeah. all mountain bike. Doing stunts, going upside down, going off crazy stuff, yeah, in the mountains. And, okay, yeah. so, so you are well placed then to to fill us in on, on the pressures that an athlete like someone doing Red Bull Rampage Oof, faces. Yeah. Is there a pressure to go bigger and to put yourself at risk? Yeah, nowadays there's a lot of people going massive. You've got high-end riders like Red Bull and Monster and all those high-energy sponsored riders. They've got they've got to fill those boots. They've got to make sure they are pushing the limit. They've got to, be, they've got to stick themselves out there. Basically, so they get noticed. So does that mean then that you're stood at the top of a you know massive jump, or whatever? You know that you're at more risk, but you go, I tell you what, I've got to do it anyway because I've got to pay the bills. Exactly. Yeah, you got to, you got to, you know, you got to do what you got to do to to do to pursue the uh, the evolution of free ride. You got to push yourself. You got to make sure you innovating the sport. So, uh, so at some point then, you know, you have to say, this job's not for me anymore. Uh, yeah, I, you get to a point where um, you're like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to send myself down this crazy 50 foot drop, something crazy like that, gap. That happened gap. to me, you know, <laughs> I once made that decision many moons ago. <laughs> right. But what happens if you take the money out of it? Do you, do you still get people willing to risk it all just for fame and infamy? Yeah, well, you got the famous Red Bull Rampage happening uh, coming up soon and uh, there's a number of young talent coming through that are willing to put it all on the line just to show off that they can actually do it, that they want this big deal, they want to be the best, they want to put down a crazy run down this mountain and like I said they, they will just throw themselves into it and I know four guys that kind of will do that and they are pretty talented to do it. So they've got the skills mm but they also appreciate they're putting themselves at risk. Oh uh, yes, yeah, like last year, two riders, high-end riders, kind of pulled out because it was a little bit too gnarly and they thought their life was at risk. And I'll, hands down, there they was a good call because it is not for the faint-hearted, that's for sure. Cheers, Dan. I mean, you've actually got first-hand experience, haven't you, of putting yourself in harm's way for the benefit of entertainment. I have. I think about it. I didn't really want to do those humongous jumps that I had to do for that GMBN video. I was well outside my comfort zone. It was peer pressure, basically. Yeah. You're lucky you walked away from that, really, yeah. isn't it? Uh, now, an event that you have done, she as well, and ironically, has always been considered like the ultimate test of human endurance. The Tour de France almost definitely isn't that now, is mm -hmm. it really, with the rise of ultra-endurance cycling? Tour de France is, is getting shorter. Uh, it's potentially getting safer. I mean, it's entirely on closed roads. The riders are so well looked after. All they have to do is pedal and steer. Yeah. All they have to do. I mean, there's no doubt there are still inherent risks with being well, yeah. a pro cyclist, aren't there? Flying down mountain descents and even getting involved in bunch sprint finishes is not without its dangers. But they do have to get involved in order to stay competitive and at the front of the general classification. That said, though, like you mentioned, Sai, there are quite a lot of safety measures in place for the modern pro peloton, and with new protocols such as the extreme weather one, I think they're pretty well protected these days. Yeah, and it's it's quite ironic, really, isn't it, when you consider that actually there are calls to make road racing more exciting, like add more gravel or steeper climbs, generally create more pain, until you wonder then where that would lead us. Well. I think that events like the Tour de France, most professional cycling events, will remain pretty similar uh, over the foreseeable future because they do share something in common with a lot of other popular sports in that the level of entertainment is not necessarily linked to how extreme the sport is that you are watching. As for truly extreme sports though, that might just be human nature. Yeah, or maybe the nature of some humans because doing something extreme in pursuit of fame and fortune is nothing new, is it? I mean, it's as old as humanity. We've got legends of the classical era. We've got the kind of heyday of adventuring in the late 19th, early 20th centuries, right up to the present day where you've got extreme nutcases like Felix Baumgartner. I mean, even Martin Beaumont to a certain extent. Mm. For me, I think 
those people that are willing to push the limits of human endeavour should absolutely be allowed to do so. The only time I think I'm going to feel uncomfortable watching them is if somehow that lure of fame and fortune feels like it's too strong and actually someone is taking bigger risks than they otherwise would be willing to do so. How you know whether they're being lured by fame and fortune, I don't know, but mm. that's when I... It's a very interesting subject, isn't it? And as ever, we would like to get your thoughts on it. Do you think that some cycling events are beginning to get a little bit too extreme? Or is this simply a question that's being asked of human endeavour that has been around since, well, since humans started endeavouring? Yeah, leave your comments in the comment section down below. It's now time for Cycling Shorts. We will start Cycling Shorts, unfortunately, with some bad news. Your next bike could be 25% more expensive. Mm, I'm afraid it could. And this is because recently Donald Trump approved tariffs on Chinese imports to the tune of $200 billion worth. Uh, that includes, within that amount of money, bikes, frames and accessories, etc. Initially that tariff will be 10%, but already by January the 1st it's going to be up to 25%. Oh, hopefully though, our headline start is scaremongering ever so slightly. So rather than the whole bike being 25% more expensive, potentially manufacturers could only pass on the levy that they're paying uh, onto us as the consumer. But whatever way you look at it, things are gonna get a little bit more expensive and, and that's annoying. Mm. So we, we could try and find a positive note to this. Oh, That is that smaller US manufacturers might now be able to compete a bit better with some of the big guns. Well, that would, I suppose, be the point of it in the first place. It could be even worse, though, for the UK after Brexit. Yeah. Should we leave politics to one side for yes, a moment? Um, sticking with the UK, though, actually, very briefly, uh, we have another person attempting Land's End, John O'Groats, which is the length of the United Kingdom. appreciate these stories are kind of ten a penny at the moment, but this one is a little bit different because Baz Bignall is attempting it on one of the London public hire bikes. Mm. Yeah, that's right, and also... Uh, whilst raising money for Great Ormond Street Hospital, he's also added in uh, a couple of hundred kilometres extra detour to go via London. Yeah, I reckon he's done that so that he can dock his bike temporarily and cut down on costs a little bit. <laughs> Must be racking up a fortune there. Yeah. Uh, now, if you've never been to London before, those bikes are heavy to start, and they've only got three gears, so it's a tough old challenge for him, there's no doubt about that. Although on the flip side, they've got some great mud guards and a nice yeah. little place to put your bag on the front, which is really oh, handy. Perfect. Over to Austria now, where the World Championships kicked off on Sunday with the team time trial. And not just winning, but winning in style were the Canyon SRAM team. I mean, check out those zip disc wheels for a start. Yeah, not just the disc wheels either. They've got matching overshoes to boot. Wouldn't miss them coming along, would you? They're very bright indeed. Apparently, that was the last trade team time trial, at least for the time being, because from next year onwards, it's going to be done with national federations rather than the trade teams. Fair enough in some ways, but... Apparently, they're going to be combining the men's and the women's time from a particular nation to give us our overall results. I'm not sure I like the sound of that. No. It feels a bit gimmicky. I want to know who the best men's team is and the best women's team, not the team that's been let down the least by their counterparts. Oh, yeah. It adds some pressure, doesn't it? Because, yeah. well, I've let down quite a few people in my time and they've always been quite upset about it. Yeah, I'd say you probably let yourself down. On a few occasions. Well, it has, yeah. And I was upset about that too. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, right, now winning the men's were Team Quickstep. And actually, they had yet another double day this season because Philippe Gilbert also won the GP Isberg on the same day, which, incredibly, was his first race back after breaking his kneecap mm. in that wow. frankly horrific crash at the Tour de France. That's really quite the comeback from Gilbert, that, isn't it? It is, isn't it? Such a comeback, in fact. So pleased was he that... He took to Instagram uh, and with this photo apparently appears to be placing it on a par with comebacks of Michael Jordan, Pele and also Muhammad Ali as well. Wow. Yeah, it's quite a comeback. Yeah, it's quite a, a sort of a little bit lost for words really. Yeah. I mean, that's a little bit like us comparing our big win over Jens Vogt on Swift to the downfall of Miguel Indre in 96, isn't it really? Well, I mean, it kind of, kind of was on a par. Wasn't it with that? I'm beaten. It's going to be unfair. I guess. And I mean, it? you know, just like Miguel Indurain, Jens hasn't really been the same since. No. He? Although unlike Indurain, who remains genial and, and pleasant, Jens has well, he's, he's been a bit aggressive towards oh, us, hasn't yeah. he? Didn't take, it, didn't take it all that well. Did Not he? really. I'm no. starting to wish that I'd put an Instagram post up of us winning and then Miguel Indurain next to us. It's like a comparison, really. It's not too late, mate. Throwback Thursday. 
Yeah, I'm going to do that. No, I'm not. <laughs> uh, right, a couple of weeks ago, you may remember that we featured a kangaroo crash that was captured on a cyclic camera. Yeah. Well, apparently, it was just the tip of the iceberg. Well, that's right, because according to some Australian newspaper reports, the, the dry conditions are drawing the macropods out of the bushland, and according to the ACT Parks and Conservation, they're anticipating that there will be upwards of 5,000 collisions with marsupials in just Canberra alone. That's double the number of collisions from last year. Wow. So stay safe out there, Australian friends. Make sure you use your camera in Canberra. Yeah. It's time to get a little bit excited now because we've got a brand new giveaway for you and it's a double header coming from Pedled and Brooks. That's right. So following on from the short series of urban related videos, we have three complete sets of city cycling kit to give away, including the Kanaya jacket, the cycling chinos, the Tokyo polo shirt, the Atakai wool jacket, even a pair of socks down, the Dario socks and a t-shirt. And then on top of all that, each winner will also get an amazing Pickwick rucksack from Brooks as well. That is quite, quite the bundle, isn't oh, it? Oh yeah, now super to cool. Put yourself in with a chance of winning. All you need to do is follow the link, which will be in the description just below this video. And uh, we just wish you the best of luck. Absolutely, keep your fingers crossed for you. Uh, we've got some winners to announce today too. Five of them, in fact, of the Physique 2019 shoes and bar tape. Oh. They being Jamie Debrum, oh. Chris Ride, oh. Walter Mrochinski, Josef. Masala and Ernest Pippilis over in the US. Well done to all of you. Absolutely, congratulations. Can I just say it on a personal note? Can they let, let us know what colour bar tape they're going for? There were some mega colours in there. I want to know if someone's going for fluoro pink or fluoro orange. How hip are you, you five winners? Right, uh, we've got one last uh, lucky winner to announce. So a few weeks back, ta-da! We had a Facebook competition where we were offering one of these amazing fan jerseys up for grabs. And the winner was, let me just double check, Luke Wooten. So well done to you, Luke. Uh, this jersey, or one in your size, will be winging its way to you. Congratulations. Well, Luke will be choosing the fluorescent yellow bar tape, won't he, to go with that? Well, we, I'd go for, if you're going down that line, go for fluoro pink, mate. Just boom. Huh. This is why you're not cool, sir. Well, I know. Yeah. Well, there are many Especially reasons why I'm not like cool. That. Blimey. It's time now for our weekly inspiration, which is sponsored by our friends over at Wiggle. All you need to do is submit your inspirational cycling photo to put yourself in with a chance of winning one of three voucher amounts to spend on the Wiggle online shop. £100 for first, £75 for second, and £50 for third. Two options to do that, the hashtag GCN Inspiration over on Instagram, or just use our uploader, a link to which is in the description below. All right, Dan, we'll get straight on with the podium, shall we? Mm -hmm. And in third place, we have got this one sent in by Chase, uh, and it's from San Francisco, California. He says, 5.45 a.m. group ride, ride hard at Mount Tamalpais, regroup, catch the sunrise and the stunning view of the coast of San Francisco. And I'm absolutely blown away by the shot, particularly, I hadn't even noticed it to start with, the fact that you can indeed see San Francisco in the background there. That looks awesome. And do you know what would be even cooler about that, Dan, is if we went and did that group ride, because of the jet lag, we wouldn't even have to get up at 5.45. It'd be like the equivalent of a lunchtime ride. Yeah. Wouldn't that be amazing? We'd have had our porridge at 1am, wouldn't we? Yeah, pretty We're much. Well ready for that. Yeah. Uh, one of the good things about living in a city which is covered by smog is it's quite nice when you get out of it, isn't it? I'm not so sure about smog. It's a famously foggy place. I went for a ride the one fog. time I went to uh, San Francisco and uh, I saw zero of the Golden Gate Bridge other than what I was cycling over. No yeah. views, nothing. Yeah. Anyway. Not even golden. No, it wasn't. Right, no. second place this week uh, is from James. This is his B-Twin bike, just beyond the White Leaf Hill Climb, uh, which he did at the start of this month. Notice the sunlight through the trees and stop to enjoy oh, the moment yeah. and the end of summer. Oh, I absolutely love that shot. That's so cool, isn't it? The only slight frustrating thing there is it's his road bike, and imagine if he was on a cyclocross bike, he'd just cruise off through the woods. Yeah. yeah, that'd be great, wouldn't it? Anyway, a deserving second place for you, James. Congratulations. But there can only be one winner. £100 of Wiggle Vouchers wing its way over to Adrian, who is on a Batavus bike over in Rocklaw, over in Poland. I just <laughs> I just looked up how to pronounce that. Still got it completely wrong. Couldn't even remember. Anyway, <laughs> good job it's on screen. <laughs> Lovely so. photo, but it's just riding around, hoping to get home before the sun sets. And that is, that is photo. so cool, that shot, isn't it? That sums up, like, well, 
the long lost summer, Dan, that uh, that is just rapidly leaving us here in the UK. But uh, there we go. Yeah, well, I think that's fantastic. Anyway, I wonder if he's going to share his prize with the photographer. He said having a photographer is obviously a coincidence. Anyway, let us know what you do with your vouchers, whether you split them or not, and indeed what you spend them That's on. It's a dilemma, isn't it? Yeah, and if you want to take part, of course, uh, all you have to do, as Dan said at the beginning, was share your photo on Instagram with the hashtag GCN Inspiration, or send it straight to us via the uploader, the link to which is in the description beneath this video. He's going to say to his photographer, isn't he? Did you watch GCN show this week? No? Yeah, I wouldn't bother. Not worth watching. <laughs> For Tech of the Week, we are, as ever, going to head over to our workshop. Thanks, guys. Well, this week, we take a look at four examples of bike tech that was better back in the day. Plus, we take a look at a new hub, new shoes, your upgrades, your bikes, and a whole heap more. Join us on Thursday for the GCN Tech Show. Looking forward to this. I haven't done it for a couple of weeks. Oh. It's hack forward slash bodge of the week. Now we're going to kick things off from, with this one from David Peralta. Uh, I made a wooden bracket to hang my Zwift TV on my mechanic stand clamp. I tell job you well done, I'd say. I think that's pretty cool though, isn't it? Yeah, neat job done there too. I'd say that's a hack. Yeah, you know what, I think it probably is a hack. Always got to go in for a mega close inspection before you put your seal of approval on well, anything. Well, yeah, I think you should be thorough about these things. I mean, there is that question mark in my head about why you don't just put a bracket on the wall that TVs are supposed to be attached to. But I suppose you can't move it around then. Yeah. Well, since I can't do either, I'm still saying that's a hack. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then, next up. Now, here's one I can do. Uh, this is from Rob Evans. Uh, he said he's not sure if this is a GCN hack or a GCN bodge, but it was definitely a super nice. See what you've done there, Rob. Yeah. There we go. That does look super nice, doesn't it? That kind of a cheesecake. Hey! Know, it's not UCI legal if uh, the, the tube ratios are all out of whack. Yeah. Uh, 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 next up from Idar, uh, IKEA bag hack. Well, you've made a rather neat job of an IKEA bag there. I think that's about as good as you can do with one of those things, isn't it? To be fair, that's that's some pretty nifty bike packing luggage there. I'm not entirely sure whether an IKEA bag is the best fabric for that job, but still, you know, it's, that's I'm pretty impressed with the way he's fashioned it very neatly into his frame. Yeah, with a zip. I'm, I'm giving that a hack. You want to take a close look at it to do it yourself? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, next up, we've got this from Mr. Outdoorsy. This, uh, I think, I'm not even going for a closer look, Dan, because I know what this one is. I think it's an amazing hack. Right, need to park your bike at the cafe pub and don't want it to roll away or fall. Use one of these wristbands as a handbrake. Keep it on the water bottle and it also stops it rattling. A handbrake? You know, like, you know that feeling of you lean your bike up against a wall and you turn around and then five seconds later you just see it going and you're scraping the edge of your expensive saddle all the way down some abrasive wall, maybe a bar tape as well. All it needs is a handbrake. Yeah. I just turn mine upside down, put it on the saddle and the hood. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next up, from David, minor accident, broke new carbon handlebars, fixed with a piece of two centimetre by two centimetre wood and gaffer tape, got me home 32 miles. Wow. Well. You know what? That is that is the essence of a bodge, isn't it? But one that you know gets you home 32 miles. Fair play to you, Dave. Yeah. Well, I mean, okay. Hack forward slash good bodge bad bodge. Yeah, you basically. Rename the segment. Good bodge. G yeah. Got I mean, you home. Yeah, but it is, isn't it? It's a get. It's a get you home. Why? That's bodge. good that you had that amount of gaffer tape with you as well. Yeah. Because because uh, the amount that I've got wrapped around my little mini pump. Is Oh, Not I really enough. I've always got it along with a piece of two by two wood in my back pocket <laughs> as well. Uh, well, say bodge, but a good one. Right, that's the end of this week's Hackle Bodge. Use the hashtag GCN Hack to post your pictures up to social media. Uh, or again, you can use the uploader to put them there. We'll go through a whole host more next week. Sorry, mate. He could have used an inner tube to wrap that with, and then he'd have had like suspension handlebars. Imagine that. Always thinking. It's that time of the show now where we show you a comedy photo, or a normal photo in fact, and you have to give us a comedy caption. First of all though, we've got obviously the results of last week. This was your photo, and the winner was Enrique Figura, uh, who said, Wheelie Curls, upper body workout for GCN presenters. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, it's got to be a lightweight front wheel though for me to do those. Anyway, you get yourself a GCN Camelback water bottle. So there you go. You do struggle with the old mountain bike wheels, don't you? So lifting yeah. them up. Uh, this week's photo is this one from the Euro Metropole race in Belgium. Mass Pedersen was the winner. Uh, I shall get you started. See you at midnight, Mass. 
See what I did there? I uh, thankfully, it's not our task to give a humorous caption, but hopefully you, t you lot out there can do a lot better than me. Yeah, Sorry. St stick your caption in the comment section down below and we will find the best one. It's Midnight Mass, but it's because his name's Mass. No, I, yeah, I got that. And he's drinking, so he'd probably be out till midnight. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah it's all right. We've been reading through all your comments over the last seven days, so before we let you know what's on the channel over the next seven, we'll read out three of our favourites. Uh, the first two came underneath Emma Does Cyclocross. Jay Bratt said, I found Cyclocross made my bum hurt. Maybe it was from getting my ass kicked. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, Phil Lent said, no, 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 Emma, don't let the CX people corrupt you. Stay pure, stay on tarmac. Well, you know, Phil was in the minority there. Most people actually in the comment section seem to think that Emma will be world champion in cyclocross by February. Uh, and you know what, having seen the determination with which she's practicing, yeah. and the fact that she's really quite good at it, they're probably right. She can, she can do what she wants as far as I'm concerned, now that she's got the world to prediction wrong. I was pretty pleased about that. Good point, I'm yeah. relieved. Very good. Uh, right, now, uh, last week under the GCN show, uh, we asked you to list some of the things that you thought perhaps were going extinct cycling skills. But uh, Dave the dog dude replied that actually he thinks the only thing he's missing by having gears for spinning while climbing instead of grinding 42-23 uh, is knee pain. Which, uh, which, yeah, I mean, that's fair enough, isn't it? I, I was wondering whether or not uh, people were missing out by not grinding up hills, and, um, and apparently not. Not much, by the sounds of it, are they? No. Uh, right, coming up this week then, on Wednesday, Emma Does Cyclocross is back, so for the fans of that, make sure you tune in for that. A uh, double header, actually, for that, yeah. because we've also got the World Championships preview. I'm so excited about the World Championships, Dan, I can't even tell you. Well. Good that we've got two videos inside because on Thursday we've got our top 10 coolest world champions of all time and on Friday it is Ask GC Anything. Is Emma in that one, by the way? Should we write? We better put her in, haven't we? Just, it, on so on get Thursday, Friday it's our, no, Thursday it's our top 11 coolest world champions of all time. Yeah, wicked. Uh, yeah, Friday, as you said, is Ask GC Anything, so make sure you get your questions in for that. Saturday we have the first of our core routines for cyclists, which is done by one of the top 11 coolest riders at the World Championships of all time, Emma Pooley. And then on Sunday, it is my own personal KOM challenge, Dan. Uh, and also on Saturday, by the way, the day before, of course, uh, you can see the bike that I've used for that uh, over on the Tech Channel. So make sure you check that one out as well. He's pretty nervous about his KOM challenge. Yeah. Thankfully, brown shorts are fashionable again. Yeah. And there's some really good weather apps as well. <laughs> now, we don't want to be seen to be encouraging ever more extreme behaviour. But it is, Dan, isn't it? Time for Extreme Corner. Thankfully, this Extreme Corner from Simone Temperato is not that dangerous. Really good, wasn't it? Well, uh, you know what? I think that is pretty dangerous, mate. Imagine laying that down, coming well, to a stop. Not like a life traffic or light. death, is it? Well, he's not. He's uh, going up a hill, wasn't he? He said he rode like seven kilometres. Yeah, uphill. Sixteen k is now average. I think or maybe it was a little bit dangerous. Maybe I'm doing doing him a disservice. I think so. Yeah. No, well, I think we should move on anyway. So because basically what you've done is said that he's not extreme enough, yeah. and actually to get real praise he's on just this show. Just on his laptop up close, analysing <laughs> things again to deem it a hack or bodge of whether or not it's extreme or not. <laughs> I anyway, just don't want him to try anything harder, Dan, for the sake of entertainment. Before we finish with this week's GCN show, uh, we would like to give a quick shout out to our shop. Uh, over at shop.globalcyclingnetworks.com, we've got a few things that will keep you warm if, like here in the UK, things are getting rather cold outside. Uh, first up, we have got long sleeves in both the pro team kit and also the fan team kit, so there's something for everyone there. That's right, and also, on the casual side of things, uh, many of you were commenting last week that uh, you spotted the jacket that I was wearing, uh, and that is indeed new. That's available for pre-order in black and also red as well, so make sure you check out that too. You look pretty hip in that, mate. Oh, thanks, mate. I'm joking. Uh, right, if you haven't seen Sai's video from Sunday where he went behind the scenes at the Oakley HQ over in California, uh, that is a very interesting watch. So if you haven't watched it already, make sure you do so now. It's down here. Yeah, and give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it.